have your Bibles this morning, turn to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. This morning we're going to be talking about the cost and the care. I know, uh, as Angelus was singing, actually during Sunday school, she was really excited. <laughs> because the verses that we were in Psalms 96 down there, and it talked about praise and and giving uh, and recognizing the majesty and the splendor of God in Psalms 96 and it uttered sing 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 three times ascribe to his uh, who he is and and there was just so much. it was all about praise and then if you recognize this morning there was even the songs that we sang in worship a lot dealt with our praise and our worship of worshiping a holy God and so I want to bring us into a point of understanding that it is because the reason we worship, or one of the reasons, there's many reasons, one of the reasons that we worship a holy God is because of the cost that he paid and the care that he gives for us. Amen? And, and, and if you want, throughout this, throughout, uh, this morning, be reminded, look into and through to your thoughts of, does God, did he pay something for me what is it? And, and how much does he actually care for me? Even through all of my utmost difficulties, God still cares for me and paid such a cost and cares for me? Yes, he did. For some of you that are thinking here this morning, well, obviously, Pastor Brent, we all know about this. Well, I, I wanted to, to bring it into a, a thought process this morning, especially in John chapter 11. There is the example of Christ with the cost and the care and I say it that way because if I am a follower of Christ therefore I need to look at the teachings of Christ the examples that he lays out it must be for my life also it means that I might have to sacrifice something that's going to be the cost for me but in that and you'll find out uh, or you know this as we come through to the end toward communion, how much is intertwined, cost and care go together. They're, it's not separate. You cannot have it separate. It goes together. Christ did it and exampled it for us, especially here in John chapter 11. And so we too have to have that same, as in scripture read this morning, Christ-like mind of the cost and care. One of the things with that, and before I delve into John chapter 11, would be this. We always, you know, we say that we pray for one another. We're a church that prays for one another. One another. We're a people that prays for one another. But I'm going to tell you, and, and that's good. That's the caring end of it. Here is the cost of just that phrase. I will actually sit down and pray with you. There are times in our lives where individuals need more than, hey, I'm praying for you. They need us to say, and I know I spoke on this last week too, they need us to say, let's sit down together. We will pray this together. You and I, I'm right here with you, praying with you. Christ did the same thing. He did the same thing. And so we ought to emulate him. We ought to do just like him, praying with our friends. Friends are important, amen? Some of us struggle with how many friends we have, but friends, no matter how many you have, even if you have just one, friends are important. Christ had friends. Here in John chapter 11, he had some good friends. Mary, Martha, Lazarus. They were really good friends. He hung out at their house often because that's how close this relationship was. And so there's this point in time, though, where uh, Lazarus gets really sick. And Jesus, this is toward the end of his ministry, and Jesus is a, a wanted, you might as well just say he's a wanted man. They, they really want him gone, and his teachings gone. And so here you have Jerusalem that's really struggling with the care and cost that Christ is giving to those around him. He has followers all the time that are just kind of surrounding him. And so Jerusalem, the, especially the religious leaders, they're having a difficulty with Christ. And just a short little trek away is where Lazarus 
Mary and Martha live. And so it was easy for them to, to send out a note to their friend, Jesus. In fact, if, you, if you'll turn to uh, ch chapter 11 and verse 3, the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. I want us to take note of the condition of the relationship here. Your dear friend. And so when I talk about cost and care, you have where Christ knows about Lazarus. And this relationship of how he cares not only for Mary and Martha, but especially how much he cares for Lazarus who is sick. Let me grab my Bible here. Christ knows everything. God knows everything. The Holy Spirit is at work revealing everything. And so there in John chapter 11, at verse 4, let's get down to this here. It says, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God. I, the Son of God, will receive glory from this. We're talking about this cost care thing with Christ. Not only does he know that, that Lazarus is, is sick, actually so sick unto death, but here he's telling the people, he's telling those that are with him in the moment, the disciples, you know, just so you guys, I want you guys to know that even though people want me gone just you know, a few miles away, even though that, I still care so much about Lazarus. And, and so he, he begins to talk to him. And in this conversation, you have the disciples, whoa, wait a minute, Jesus. They start to look at the cost. Do you know if you get anywhere near this area, they will get you. You will die. You will come to an end that we don't want. They're looking at the cost. They're not even looking at that care factor with Lazarus. They're looking at their own personal self of the cost that's going to take place. And yet Jesus comes in and as, as he's having a conversation with his disciples so that they can recognize the care and the cost, you have my friend Thomas. Thomas is so cool in this sense because when, when Thomas is, the name Thomas is uttered with scripture, maybe it's me, maybe it's you, one of the first things that pops into our mind is Thomas is doubting, doubting Thomas. Why is he doubting Thomas? Tom, Christ has died and, and, and people have seen the risen Savior, except for Thomas. And what does Thomas say? Unless I touch the prince on his hands, put my hand in his side, see the, whole, the, the nail scars in his feet. Unless that, I will not believe. I can't believe. Yet that's doubting Thomas. But here, before the death of Christ, we have Thomas in John chapter 11. Wow, the cost is very great. But Christ cares so much. Thomas says, hey, we'll go with you. And if you die, we die. Thomas is all big and bold because even he's starting to grasp that even though the cost is so great, the caring of God is greater. And so here we have in verses 7 through 10 that cost never outweighs the care of disciples and disciple makers. Why do I say that? Because I, we have where Christ, you know, it, I'm, I'm at, at seven, what, seven through ten. You're gonna, uh, I want you to understand that Christ, who knows the cost and knows what it means to care, it is nothing outweighs this connection. And so, what takes place? Cost and care equals disciples. You, me. Now, I'm not talking about the twelve. I'm talking about disciples, followers of Christ. Those that say they follow Christ in his teachings begin to understand the cost and the care and what that means, not just for self, but for others. So at verses 7 through 10, 
7 through 10 says what? Finally, he said to the disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But, the, but at night, there is, a da there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Understand this. See, for Christ, it's like this. I know what the cost is. But even with the cost, I have to be the light in the darkness. I have to be what comes into their life. And so when I talk about cost and care as a follower of Christ, I, Brent, have to be that person that steps into someone else's life. No matter what the cost is, there must be cost and care. And I have to decide that as I am a follower of Christ and his teachings, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to walk into wherever danger is. I'm going to walk into wherever joy is. I'm going to walk into where sorrow is. I'm going to walk into where happiness is. Whatever is in the life of an individual, that's where I'm going to be. Because of the care. Christ teaches care. Man, no matter what takes place, we have to step up and care. Down to verse 14. Here's the thing with, with us as a people. It, it's easy to come in on a Sunday morning and go, uh, let me, oh, when the saints go marching in, you know, any kind of battle song you can think of. It's easy to come into church, gather with other followers of Christ, join arms, lock together. We are soldiers for God. We're, nothing's going to take us down. It's easy to do that. But then sometimes life comes in with struggles. And, and we begin to go, okay, what is the actual, what's the cost outside on the corner? What's the cost over here? What is the cost to, uh, for me to have this interwoven care with the cost? It can be a struggle. Not only can it be a struggle sometimes, but sometimes we make it because, you know what? God's timing stinks. Why? I want, it my, I, I want it my way, God. I, you, if, you, I, if you care for me, you'll do it now. In my time. God's timing stinks, at least in our own eyes. Because we start to not look at the cost and care that he's actually bringing our way. What's verse 14 say? Verse 14. Then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. Because this will give you another opportunity to believe in me. Come, let's go see him. See, as he's talking to his disciples, it's like, you know what? You think you got it bad. Lazarus is dead. In Mary and Martha's eyes especially. His sisters. My, remember what I said? My dear friends. And so with this, there's, in fact, uh, there, there's, there's area um, with Mary and Martha. Well, Notice in, in 14, Christ says he's glad he wasn't there. Well, why was he glad he wasn't there? So that, so that what? Glory can come? Not only that, so I wasn't there because this will give you another opportunity to believe in me. Let's go see him. Another opportunity to believe. I know you might be having a struggle right now, but this is your opportunity this is how much I care for you, that your belief, that, 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 that your faith will be undergirded, that, 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 that you uh, as an individual will find strength in me from what you see is what the world does. You know what? 
God's going to get, and, and we're going to get into this, where God gets the glory for what's about to take place. And it's perfect glory. <laughs> because as he is uh, walking with his disciples over to where Lazarus is, what? Already dead four days in the ground. In fact, they're already having their little, their little uh, uh, gathering of a lot of crying that's taking place with Mary and Martha, even as they're walking up toward the house. Verse 21 to 26. When I talk about cost and care, see, I, the, Christ always knew about the cost, but here's the care. Here is really, here is the care. Because in his teachings, as he talks to individuals, Christ always takes every opportunity. Let me show you who God is. Let me introduce you to the Father who is over all things. When you talk about what's taking place in your eyes, let me show you a God who is, who is as we talked about in Sunday school, who is, who is majestic, who is over all things. There is nothing that God does not have a finger upon, whether the heavens or the trees or the sea or, or the earth itself or the individuals that are upon. God, let me show you his glory because I care that much about you. But I'm going to do it in an opportunity of teaching. In verse 21, Martha, who is the first one to know that Jesus is drawing close to the house, goes running out to him. And she comes up to Jesus and she says to Jesus, Lord, if you had only been here, if your timing was our timing, if you had been here as soon as we sent that letter, a note over to you, you could have ran and been here. If you had just been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know God will give you whatever you ask. Now, let me pause here. This is where I understand the care of this. Jesus, I told you, they're good friends. It's not like he just spoke to them for a moment in time. They had conversations, which gives Martha the reason to say, I know, I know a few things. I know if you'd been here, you wouldn't have died. Why? Because you would have healed them from his sickness. I know if you had been here that, that all would have been well, but I also know this. This is why she's like, put in the, the, the care in his face. Jesus, whatever you ask God, I know you will get it. So then what does Jesus do with his teaching moment? Your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said. He will rise when everyone else rises on that last day. Um, Martha, it's not like these two are going together. The, you know, you teach me, I'm going to tell you what I already know from your teachings. Yeah, they're all gonna, everybody's going to rise at that last day. I know it. And my brother who died will rise again. Yes, I know it. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like she's saying, but do you remember I asked you that whatever you ask God, because I'm not still satisfied with knowing that he will rise on the last day. That's, can, 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 can we be like who we are? God, that's not really the care that I'm looking for. I know that we should be all celebrating. Yeah, last day resurrection. Yeah. But in my heart, it's so hurt so much. Even though I know that that will take place. So then what does Jesus say to her? Are you ready for that, that teachable moment of caring? I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? See, that, to me, that's care. Martha, I care for you so much that even when death comes, I am the resurrection in life. It's almost like he's saying, Martha, we've discussed this. I am who I am. 
and then he puts it right back. See, here's the thing about caring for others. You cannot make them disciples. Only God does that. You cannot make them followers of Christ and his teachings. Only God changes that heart. We could be a part of the action of it because, we, because there's a cost to it and we care, just like Christ did. But here, Christ lays it in Martha's lap. Martha, do you believe? And Martha has to do a, a couple things. She has to go, wow, he did come, the cost. And wow, he still cares so much about me. Right here, right now. Mary too, then here, because Martha runs back, hey Mary, he is here. So Mary goes out with the same conversation to Jesus about her brother being dead. They're graveside. They're, they're right there. And Jesus, in his conversation with her, is like, man, we're going to call, we're, we're going to call him out of the tomb. And Mary's like, well, wait a minute. She said, I know you care about us, but this dude stinks. <laughs> He's been in there for four days. And then Mary, in this conversation, see, here's the thing. This is this cost and care with Christ. It always involves others besides the ones that he's having eye contact with. Yeah, his good friends Mary and Martha and the dead Lazarus. But there's others that are standing around. There are those that came out wailing with her still. Oh, we still got to cry with Mary and Martha because their brother's dead. You know, so there's, there's still others that are going to hear something. There's still others that's going to come in contact with, whoa, isn't that the one that they want gone? Isn't that the one that, that they, they are having problems with? Isn't he the one, the cost? Man, but look, he's the kind. In fact, they talk about, look how much he cares. It's, there's that famous line, Jesus wept. Oh, look how much he cares, you know, and all this other stuff. There is that conversation that takes place, but you've got to grasp, it is a caring of Christ that takes place. There's these emotions that, 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 that are in Christ that is seen by the people there. But not just, for, not just for raising someone from the dead. Down in verse 40, Jesus responds, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. <laughs> and here, of, of the group, for me, I, this is my highlighted part. I tell you, I highlight. You should highlight too. You should underline, make notes in your scriptures. Take something to where it's in your heart. This is where I know how much he cares, not only for Lazarus who is dead, not only for Mary and Martha, his good friends, but for all those that were there. This is the greatest care. He looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouts, Lazarus, come out. And here comes this stinky old guy in his grave clothes, comes out of the tomb. Take those clothes off of him. Why? Because he's alive. But, you know, sometimes we get so caught up into to the story. He cared so much about everyone else that was there. I want everyone to know, God, you sent me. He didn't even have to, he didn't have to utter those words out loud, but he did it with purpose because of his care for all those that are standing there. And what takes place after they unwrap Lazarus? Many people came to believe. So when I talk about cost and care and me being Christ-like, I place myself, God, with the anointing of your Holy Spirit, those steps that you direct, place me in spots where the cost may be great or the cost may be little. I'm not here to judge on that, but I know this. Whatever the cost, I will be there. And whatever it takes for the care, I will be there. Only by the direction of your Holy Spirit. Not by me. Why? Just like Jesus taught in those moments. Not for me, but for God's glory so that others can come to know Him and believe in Him being sent by God. 
as we get ready to take communion this morning. This is, this is like the easy one for me. You talk about cost and care. Christ, the ultimate cost. Because he cared the ultimate care for me personally. For you too. Christ died on the cross for me and for you. That was the cost. In fact, it's not just the cost of Christ dying on the cross. It's the cost of God, the Heavenly Father, saying, my only son dying on the cross. I give him. That's the cost. Christ gives his life. That's the cost. Because they care so much for us. Even when man, from the earliest of stages, decided to rebel against God and turn their backs on God. God still cared enough for the cost and the care. So this morning we're going to sing. We're going to sing. Uh, it is no secret what God can do. I'm going to ask them, Pastor Mark and Sister Glenda, to come forward. I talk about the cost and the care, especially for communion. See, my head just rattles. When I look at John chapter 11 and how he raised Lazarus from the dead, and then I'm about to take communion, reminded that not only did, was the cost, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross for me, because, they cared, because God cared so much for me, but I also know this, that Christ rose from the dead and is alive today has gifted us with his Holy Spirit that say that we will follow him in his teachings. That we, God, forgive me of my sins. The things that, that, that displeased you, the things that, that just kind of were, were not of you, God, make me of you. That cost I am willing to pay because you cared for me that much. And so this morning as we get ready to sing, it is no secret what God can do. When I talk about cost and care on my personal level, that's it. I will, sh I will share every secret of God that God reveals to me to someone else. But I have to know this, that it all came to one point first, that Christ died for me so that I could have eternal life with him. And it came from a, si a simple thing, God, please forgive me. And then I'm going to say the second thing after that, and then help me for the next step after. And here's the thing. He sacrifices his life, and then all that that follows is the caring. I care for you so much. Your next step. I care for you so much. Your next step. The individuals that you come in contact with, I care for you that much because, because of what you do. You're that light in the darkness of the world that's going to change your life through the work of the Holy Spirit. So as we stand to sing, it is no secret what God can do. Take that to heart. God has something for you. Whatever the cost is and whatever it is for care, He wants you to be there. Know what He did for you and do it for others as we sing. Before we sing, though, as we stand, go ahead, let's stand up. We're, I'm going to pray. If there is someone here that does not know God that way, that He paid the ultimate sacrifice, or beyond that, that He still cares for you so much, you might be at one of your darkest moments. You might be at one of your hardest moments. You might be at one of your most jubilant moments. Because that's the thing. When he cares and, he, and, and things are going well, we should be praising him. Worshiping him. God, if there is someone here that does not know you in such a way that you care so much and have paid the ultimate cost for us, may our hearts be changed. God, we ask for you to forgive us. Make us holy. As we are about to take communion, God, and, and taking of the bread and the juice that represents the shedding of your blood, God, please wipe us clean so that in this time frame, we are always seen as holy in your presence. You are a holy God with your presence here. And we ask, make us holy in your presence. Pour over us in such a way, God, so that as we worship you, and are reminded of the cost and care, we draw closer to you. And then we never forget to share it with someone else until the day you call us home. God, those of us that are standing here, may we reevaluate the cost and care that you place before us for others, not for our glory, 
but for your glory. In Jesus' holy name, amen.